Hey guys, research shows that 54% of Londoners confess to being super stressed when it comes to their mortgages and when it comes to their overall living costs. That number rises to 75% if you are currently renting in London. That's right. And on today's video, we're going to be sharing with you why we moved out of London and why it was the best decision for our finances and for our overall quality of life. Yep. If you really love today's topic, would really appreciate it if you hit that like button and hit a subscribe button to show some support for our channel. Now, for some context, for those who are new to our channel, uh, Mary and I are a husband and wife team. We moved out of London in 2012. And during that time, in that period of time, we've not only grown as a family, we've raised children, and we've really seen a massive change in our lives, including becoming mortgage-free as part of that journey. So we want to really give you guys a real picture of how we have improved our lives mm -hmm. and why you may want to consider potentially, and this wouldn't be for everybody, potentially moving out of London as well. All right, so what's our very first point? Like why, you know, why did we move out of London? Yeah, so the obvious one is the property costs. Yep. So we wanted, you know, when we wanted to buy a home, we knew that we wanted a big house with a drive, a garden, a big kitchen, and we just knew that we would have to spend an arm and a leg in order to get what we wanted in London. Whereas mm. if we just moved slightly outside of London on the outskirts, we could get what we wanted for a fraction of the price. So it was a no brainer um, for that reason. Now, I just wanted to share a story, right? Like we all know London property prices are absolutely crazy. Mm. But here's a story that like, I got into a taxi recently. I was going to get the Elizabeth line from Abbey Wood, right? And the taxi driver was just saying to me, oh, this area, like I've been in this area since 1999. Mm. And he's like, yeah, I bought property in this area. And he said to me, he paid 45,000 pounds. And he said, I've not only bought two other properties from this one property alone that he bought for 45K, mm. he said, I still have over a hundred grand in equity from that same property. Wow. That just shows you how much London property prices have risen. And this is just like one area of London that's only really picking yeah. up now, you know, in the last maybe 24 months or, mm. or so because of the Elizabeth line, for example, mm. let alone other parts of London. Exactly. Now you come from Hackney, you're born and bred in Hackney. Yeah. Like what's going on over there? Like we go to see your parents right now, but what's happening in Hackney yeah. property? -wise? So I'm in Hackney's in zone two and the property rises have just skyrocketed. So the area in itself was once really deprived, but it's mm -hmm. now become super gentrified. Um, a lot of business and money is just being pumped into the area and yeah, it's just unaffordable. You cannot buy a house in Hackney, like you probably just get away with buying a, a two bed flat, um, depending on the size of the mortgage that you want to have, you know, for yourself. And Ooh. yeah, it, for us, as much as, you know, I'd love to be as close to my parents as possible. It, it just, it didn't even cross my mind as well as other factors mm. buying in Hackney. Yeah. Do you know what? Looking at, I mean, sometimes when we go to your parents, I walk by and look at the windows just to see what's going on. You cannot buy anything in that place below like 800k Ugh. if you're trying to buy like a three bed house or whatever. Imagine. They're all in the millions. Like it's yeah. it's, it's that it's, it's that crazy. And the down. gentrification in the area, like yeah. you know, the <laughs> you go down there, so everyone's drinking coffee and having it's drinks so and sitting bizarre. out and eating. Yeah. It's like. The demographics have changed so, so much yeah. in the area yeah. and you know being born and bred from there i wonder how you feel i mean how do you feel about that i'm just you curious know what? it's just it's just interesting like every time i go back it's just there's something new and it's just it's still hard for me to actually comprehend what's going on i literally was born and bred i moved out only for three years when i went to uni um so yeah it's just constantly seeing the changes happen before my eyes mm -hmm. um i don't know how i feel about it i don't know i'm still yeah it's an emotional one but mm -hmm. look let's talk about Point number two. So point one is property costs. And uh, um, actually to point one, without us moving out of London and buying outside of London, we would not be mortgage free today. No. We because wouldn't. we would have borrowed crazy, like we were trying to buy in somewhere like Westcombe Park in London. Mm -hmm. Back then we would have needed to buy a property for like 700,000 pounds or 650,000 pounds back yeah. in 2012. Yeah. But you know, we bought our property for below 400,000, mm -hmm. which meant we borrowed a lot less money, which yeah. meant we could actually pay off that mortgage, which we did in seven years mm -hmm. with a lot of sacrifice and hard work. Yeah. So the point is without us actually moving out of London, we, wouldn't we would be nowhere the near the wealth potential, the wealth, you know, kind of where we've got to financially, it would not have been possible. Yeah. But point number two is space, mm -hmm. right? 
So I'm giving, uh, just keeping this real, because we want to make this video really realistic. So we're making this video at the back of our house. Mm. Yeah, this is a studio at the back of the house. Yeah. There's a studio here and the next door is a gym. And then over here is a 60, 70 foot garden space. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no way we would have been able to get all of this stuff, plus a large kitchen, plus you know a driveway that can fit three cars, plus four bedrooms and a study and a dining room, plus all these other things, plus other things I haven't even talked about, mm -hmm. for the price we did, no. if we were anywhere in the London kind of vicinity. At all, at all. And, and this became more, this became more real for people when we had the pandemic, mm. because more and more people wanted, you know, more uh, space where they could hang out. Like I love coming out and all I hear, I mean, just what do you hear in the garden when you're out in the garden? Like birds chirping, it's just peaceful. It's really nice and quiet. Yeah. Whereas if we were in London, what would you be hearing? <laughs> Depends on the part of London, but certain yeah. parts you'd be hearing sirens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like cars honking their horns, yeah. Just traffic. Yeah, so that is a very important thing for somebody to consider. And, mm. you know, if you're someone who loves space and really value that, then trust me, it's a complete no-brainer um, to seriously consider moving outside of London. 100%. What's our next point? Yeah, so the next point is congestion charge and ULES. So, um, an example, like we went into London yesterday to do a talk at an event, and what was the drive like? It was a nightmare. It was literally, it was only for, was it for, we had to drive we basically it took us 30 minutes to drive about two miles yeah in central london to yeah. drive nearer to morgate and we were driving because we had some stuff in the boot mm -hmm. that we had to deliver i mean how did you feel about that given remember don't forget we're being charged like a congestion charge and mm -hmm. it's always like you know you less stuff going on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean how did you feel being stuck in traffic in london it's annoying <laughs> it's frustrating it really is frustrating especially when you know that it's only two miles away like you said it's a short drive like why should there be so much traffic but yeah it was a lot how it is that's now just, just is. shifting from that i want to talk yeah. about point four which is safety hmm. okay like listen i don't need to update you on on stats on in london but you know phone muggings big mm. problem knife crime obviously big problem yeah. i never feel safe in london hmm. and this is a weird thing I, you know i should feel safe in in london yeah but i don't feel safe i feel like i'm always watching my back i feel like mm. you know i got my phone out i'm like Whew. you know i'm like put your phone away in your pocket like i shouldn't feel like that yeah in a city bear in mind when you look up best cities in the world mm. london always ranks ranks in like top five yeah it might be number two might be number three sometimes number one mm. why do we need to feel so unsafe yeah in a city like that yeah i think for me it's not that i don't feel safe it's mm -hmm. more that i don't feel i'm always thinking about our boys and i don't mm. feel comfortable them being in certain parts of london mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that um a bit more later on in the video but it was more for the children just because i've grown up in london all my life I, i've just been used to yeah i don't know i've just i've never really felt unsafe mm -hmm. Point five for us and as to why we moved out of London is about the air quality and pollution. Mm. So we live, we have a, a, a kind of like, a, I guess you call it like a heath around us. So mm. lots of trees, lots of open space. We go for walks a lot yeah. uh, in the area, you know, at night, if everyone has their lights off, even if they don't have their lights off, you can look into the sky, you yeah. know, you would not, you would see the stars very clearly. You could count them very easily. Like, mm. you know, the air quality is a lot better. And and this is a hidden thing, actually, because if you think about it, a lot of us are working and trying to build wealth. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what we don't see, a bit like inflation, you don't yeah. really see it, right? You don't yeah. see, it's not visible. Air quality is another silent killer, mm -hmm. right? Because if air quality is not that great, then all your hard work really is actually in vain because like yeah. you're not giving yourself the best chance to live a much longer life yeah like a lot of people in london suffer from respiratory issues there was even a really sad case of a young girl who um sadly died from all of the 
congestion fumes and um, exhaust fumes from the cars. Mm. Uh, I think it was like an, a certain part of South. So they had like respiratory yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think she had eczema. Sorry, <laughs> asthma. And yeah, she, she sadly passed away, a young girl. Mm -hmm. So um, that's really sad, just, just goes to show like how bad the air quality is in certain parts of London that is just so congested. Wow. Yeah. Do you want to uh, talk about this point actually before? Okay. The schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think one of the reasons point why six. we moved to um, where we are. In Kent. We live in Kent. In Kent. <laughs> Most people. A lot of people A are. lot of people are moving yeah. out of London. It's just getting really expensive. You have the early move advantage by moving now whilst it's not that expensive <laughs> yeah. in a few years time the outskirts of London is also not going to be affordable for you you're going to have to just move further 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 up north not that it's a bad thing but if you do want to get close to London especially if you commute into London for, for work, work you mm -hmm. kind of want to move out early whilst the prices are still reasonable like where we are now it's yeah. just it's gone ridiculous. It's gone ridiculous in terms of if you want to buy now, again, prices have skyrocketed just because of More proximity to it being close to London. Mm. Yeah. So what's the next point? Yeah, so that's a really good point you made. I'd, I'd say after point six, point seven for us was the schools, right? Mm. So one of the reasons we moved is because we've got children. Yeah. Uh, our son is 11. Our second son, our second son is nine yeah. at the moment. And we moved because of the grammar schools, right? Mm -hmm. So in Kent, um, there are a lot of, there are lots of grammar schools in um, in the county mm -hmm. um, and that's just given us that possibility in fact our sons got into one of them mm -hmm. uh, one of the super selective grammar schools and it'll be starting in September and we're very excited about that mm -hmm. you know because for us you know uh, we've made a, a video previously about private schools if you want to mm -hmm. check that out I'll link to it below and above yeah. please go and watch it you know for us, we've always had this plan of having that mixture where our children will also be state educated and have that exposure. But we wanted very, you know, you know, decent schools, yeah. you know, good quality yeah. schools. And so that meant paying a premium. So even though we moved out of London, we actually paid a premium for where we live. So we are, you know, within within a catchment area. Um, and that's actually paid, that's paid off, you know. Um, but the point is, quality of schools not that there aren't good quality of schools in london there are obviously yeah but no. on, were you gonna say something yeah no what i was gonna say was it's like a postcode lottery basically mm -hmm. so if you're in london um and you want to buy a house it's unaffordable but then the schools in london that are really good they tend to be in the more kind of affluent areas which Very. means that you have to buy not only in like is london expensive now you have to buy in london in an affluent area mm -hmm. just so that you can ensure that you're within a close proximity or you're within the catchment of a good school mm -hmm. and yeah we just didn't want to risk that like just it's just too expensive it yeah just the thought of having to you know, consider living in a very affluent area in London mm -hmm. just in order to be within a close proximity of good schools. Mm -hmm. Why go through the hassle? It's a lot. <laughs> Move out where there are good schools, good state schools, if that was your, if that's what you wanted, yeah. you know, and yeah, you don't have to pay so much for it. And the thing is, it's not even that it's a hassle, it's more that people, are, it's not even an option. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? In that it's so expensive that it's only for the 1%. Yeah. And, and I mention this because if you think about it, London is such a popular city and we'll make a part two to this video by the way because mm -hmm. it's not just all it's not all bad in London, there are pros. So this video is looking at what benefits it is outside London. We'll make a video talking about what are some of the things, some of the, the cons of living outside of London and why London might be a good idea for some people. But if you look at the research, London's current population is about 8.9 million people. Mm -hmm. And by 2050, it's forecasted to increase to 11 million. So another, at least 2 million people will be moving into London. So the demographics, just imagine who would be living in London by 2050. Mm -hmm. You might think it's far away. It's really not that far from where we are now, mm -hmm. right? It's in our lifetime. So yeah. it'd be very, very interesting what London would look like price-wise. In fact, yeah. I would say that the kind of person who lives in London really mm -hmm. is, or who would live in London, is obviously the, Af you know, the person who earns a good income. And uh, London has advantages that I talked about, and one of them is earning power. Um, and another is capital appreciation for property. So investors who want that capital, that kind of long-term capital appreciation, would naturally want to pitch their tent in London because like, mm. hey, London will always be a global city, no matter how you look at it. Yeah. And we'll be touching on this in part two of the video. But for the final point I wanted to share in this video, do you want to talk about like safety and better quality of life for our children? Because you talked about this earlier. Yeah, so 
obviously growing up in London um, for most half of my life I've just seen that especially if you're in an inner city or in a deprived area mm. warehouses may be cheaper it's just children are likely well children are more likely to be um, subjected to violence crime <laughs> or um, muggins, whatever. Mm. We didn't want, we knew we wanted to have a family. We didn't, want it to be, we didn't want to be in a situation where we constantly feared our children going to school, worried about what kind of crowd um, or company mm -hmm. they will find themselves in. Um, yeah, just, I didn't have peace of mind whenever my older brothers would go out and they were like much older than me. It's just, mm -hmm. we just didn't want our children to be um, in an environment where I'm constantly worried about like, are they going to come home? Are yeah. they going to be racially profiled? Um, Ooh, yeah. Are they, yeah, because the facts are that black boys, black boys. are mm -hmm. um, unfairly and stopped more than any other race. They're more likely to be stopped, like stopped and searched. And I just, we didn't run that for our It's never boys. happened, by the way, where, where we live at the moment. Yeah, it's never happened. Never happened. Yeah, I've, no, I've never been stopped once yeah. where we live right now outside London. Never been stopped by the police. Mm -hmm. Our children have, like, nothing that we see as a typical occurrence in London has ever happened in the 12 years we've lived outside of London. Yeah. And again, this could be avoided in London if you move to the more affluent areas, but it's not affordable. So yeah. So that's the issue. Anyway, this is a good point to actually pause and hear from you guys. Do you live in London? And would you ever consider moving out of London? If yes, tell us below. If not, please tell us below. If you live outside of London, why did you move out of London? What are some of the advantages? How has it changed your life? Please jump in the comments and let us know. Now, I want to wrap up by saying we've made two other videos mm -hmm. sharing other commuter towns that we think you want to consider. So I will link here somewhere to part one looking at 10 commuter towns we've researched them extensively kind of with all the data everything for you so head over and check that out and hopefully over here to part two but either way we'll also put them in the links below for you to check out yes thank you so much for watching guys and as always in all things be, be thankful, thankful and, and seek joy, joy. take Stay care bye. people much love bye